this is why I drove an hour away because the weather is absolutely stunning here. It is beautiful, 66 degrees, nice breeze, no humidity, no rain. Um, so I think I'm gonna ride my bike anyway. Uh, I can handle a little bit of mud, um, but yeah, I'll do two loops, six miles. Uh, I'll just do it twice for 12 miles. Uh, I remember now the reason I didn't ride a bike here is because I didn't have my bikes uh, last time because I was going back and forth to San Diego. So I was like, why did I only hike here? Because it's not, I mean, it's very flat. It's not a lot of mountainous stuff. So anyway, I'm going to go in and get my day pass um, and then uh, just ask them about the trails. They also do like, um, the darkest skies are out here. So they also do like uh, stargazing, which I couldn't do because I was injured. <laughs> so you can go back and see that episode. Okay, I got the map. So I remember last time the turkey roost area is closed during the daytime for actual turkeys. <laughs> so um, so I can go in the back country. So I was just going to do this yellow loop, which is six miles down here, double loop and then come back up. But I'm actually going to ride all the trails and just spend the day here. It's already, I don't know what time it is. Hang on. Let me see. It's 12.23, so I'll start at 1. So that'll give me probably about two hours. Actually, these trails are pretty long. There's a, a perimeter trail, the Frontera. I don't want to do that. So I think I'm going to do the um, Mid Canyon Trail to the West Canyon Loop, get back on Mid Canyon. So I'm trying to look as I'm looking around my phone. And then go down past Primitive Camping to the Windmill Hill Trail, do double loop, one double loop, two and then go continue on on the yellow trail to the Frontera and then get back up onto the um, East Ridge Trail, which I think has some elevation. You can mountain bike all of these trails, which is great, and then go back on the back country or go back on the Fawn Trail. So I think it should be fine. Um, there's lots of offshoots if I have to backtrack for any reason, um, but I think that's fine. I can also skip the East Ridge Trail and just take the Frontera Trail um, on the back way. So I'm gonna, yeah, go do that. So let me download the map so I know where I'm going um, because there's no cell reception in these state parks and uh, yeah, no mosquitoes. The weather's perfect. He said that, the guy said that there was, um, the ranger said that there was uh, the same rain here that we had last night and um, but there's people on mountain bikes down there so that's good. So yeah, they're all riding. Okay, let's get going and geared up. So it's exciting and I'm gonna use my um, fancy bike again uh, just so I can make sure that it's fully working, so um, yeah. Okay, cool. All right, let's go. Okay, I'm all geared up. It's actually warmed up a lot right now. So they also have a bird blind. They have drinking water right there. Uh, this is a fantastic park. It's right off the 10. So if you're going to uh, Houston or leaving Houston or leaving San Antonio, definitely stop off at South Lana River State Park. It's literally like a couple miles, like three miles off the highway. And it's beautiful and it's you know it's your typical like kind of that west texas terrain um but the trails are fantastic so okay so yeah so i am here i'm all geared up complete sun protection obviously um so i'm going to do the agarita trail to the access trail and then i'm going to go down on this yellow one then i'm going to do double loop double loop two and then i'm going to come back up and then i'm going to go down the yellow trail go on the frontera and go up this pink trail which is east ridge now if east ridge is actually like a ridgy trail uh, it's only like 2.8 miles i may go back and do turkey spur and then on frontera which is i think the perimeter trail and then go back up and then go on fawn trail and then come back over or go on the uh actually it's kind of there's an x there i think it's marked off i don't oh no there's a bunch of x's i don't know what the x's mean anyway um yeah so that's it and of, of course you can't go into the like turkey roost area certain times of the day so that's it okay all right let's do it i anticipate this will be let's see we've got 2.3 4 5 uh 6 7 i'm guessing probably 12 miles so it'll take me about just over two hours fantastic and that's it for the day <laughs> and then after that fredericksburg and then park up for the night so i may take a shower here um which is a great thing too, even if you have a day pass, you can use the amenities. So I'll dump out my toilet, I'll take a quick shower, and then uh, head on after this. So, okay, awesome. Well, merry, merry holidays, whatever you celebrate, uh, on uh, Christmas Eve in Texas, where it does not look like Christmas. <laughs> we do not get a white Christmas here in Texas, unfortunately. Okay, two seconds into my ride, first puddle. Yeah, <laughs> so hopefully it doesn't get any worse than this. This is great. I literally rode from the parking lot right there. Okay, I'm two miles in. It's getting pretty gnarly already. So I'm just going to rinse off a little bit in this little water 
puddle that's super clear and uh yeah just try to get some of this mud off i'll show you yeah so it's already starting to be encased down here it's not too bad but i am picking up a lot of nature which is not always a good thing as long as it's not getting into the train the chain or the derailleur we're good um but yes yeah, so let me rinse off a little bit here and i was hoping with all the rocks that this part that's dried out but it's just what is the, the original mud i went through is sticking everything to it so i'm only about two miles in i don't think i'll do the full like extra blue bit because it's a pretty steep climb if i can go the other way that's fine but yeah so far it's good it's a good trail ride it's hot though didn't realize it'd be so warm today uh but yeah no no clouds so yeah i'm gonna keep going i'm almost at the little single uh first loop and double uh, the double loop one double loop two and i'll be at the bottom of the park and then i'll work my way around um so i think i'll i'll not do the ridge unless it's um unless i can get most of this mud off so I don't know, we'll see this is good at least it's better than i did back in february when i couldn't even hike and at least it's better than uh hiking so but it is beautiful i mean this is stunning it's just it's really really pretty very rocky which is good because i've got full suspension so yeah south south lano river state park little hidden gem everybody drives past on the 10. okay got most of the mud off i can see the tires again so i'm just going to do this a few more times back and forth and this clear water is now muddy sorry nature <laughs> so anyway yeah just get most of it off and then the rest up here is rocky so it's not as muddy as the beginning part so yay, nature, helping nature. Okay, it's very windy. I made it to the Frontera Trail. I'm not, now I'm gonna make a left. Not so muddy up here, but yeah, this is very, very similar to uh, Kerrville. Uh, it's only an hour away, but it's very similar terrain. So now I'm gonna go this way. Hopefully it's some, somewhat downhill. And then here yeah, I'm on the perimeter of the park. That was a lot of elevation gain and still having to go pretty uh, low on the gears because of the mud. So, okay, continuing on. So I don't know how far I've gone probably about four miles I think um yeah so that was good so I'm gonna go continue on now back up to the uh park entrance um probably another six seven miles and then if I have the energy uh I will do that extra loop that I missed because I missed the uh the first turn off and the second turn off seemed pretty steep but there was a good downhill run that was pretty awesome I had to drop my seat for that anyway it's very very windy as well uh quite hot so yeah keep going this is great very very pretty park who knew <laughs> too bad that actually i'm glad i didn't hike it because it would have you know i wouldn't have gone down all this end if i was just hiking with a broken foot so or a busted ankle so this is this is much better okay the last trail i'm doing is the fawn trail that'll take me back up to the uh the road this is great so the last part of it is basically like a service road and it's pretty flat there was a little bit of elevation gain but it's uh some good downhill runs on this end too so i think after this um i'll go shower and I might go do the Overlook Trail. It's uh, uh, 1.8 miles out and back. I uh, might be a good, like, stretch my legs. Although I will come back to this park quite often if I'm going on the 10 freeway. It's really beautiful. So, yeah, I couldn't imagine doing this in the summertime when it's 108 degrees. Because right now it's 66 and the sun is just, like, blaring down. And, uh, yeah, <laughs> you'd probably die a heat stroke. Anyway, home stretch, I've got uh, 1.8 miles on the Fawn Trail. And then I'll go back to the van. Um, and then I think I'll... I'll just go take a shower and then I'll go do a leisurely walk after that. So, okay. Thank you, Lano, South Lano State Park. <laughs> I don't know if there's a North Lano River State Park, but anyway. Um, okay. So yeah, just uh, up and onward, out and about. <coughs> Excuse me, mosquitoes in my mouth. Holy shit. Actually, there's no bugs out here. I'm just, you know, wallowing in my my heated misery. <laughs> uh, and it's also my, like, uh, it's my lady time too. So I'm just like, oh, this butterfly, uh, my lady time. So I'm just like, mm, whatever, just get all, get it all out. And then, uh, you know, wait another 28 days. <laughs> Guys, you don't even understand. You have no idea what it's like. There's the overlook trail, but there's no, there's no parking here. So I think the road goes up. Okay. So now I take the road back All the mud is gone. So that's good. That's good. I think I did uh, nine miles, maybe 10 miles total. I'll let you know when I get back to the van. <laughs> all right, I am all turby twisted up, which will be my uh, garb for the next like two hours till my hair dries. Uh, okay, shower is done. I'm wearing my Tallulah Gorge t-shirt, which I thought I lost and then I found it in my house. <laughs> so if you've never been to North Georgia, um, Tallulah Gorge is absolutely stunning and it's where uh, Carl Willenda 
the tightrope walker uh, walked across it in like 1970 something. So they, the Walenda Wel family actually own part of the land um, right next to the gorge. Um, but you can see the old pylons that used to be up where they had the tightrope on it. And it's like a 900 foot gorge. It's crazy, it's nuts. You're nuts if you uh, do anything like, except like hike around it. Yeah, I'm just gonna walk on a tightrope. I'm like, how do you wake up in the morning and decide that that's gonna be your day? <laughs> like that's, that's what I wanna know. Anyway, okay, so I'm done. It is not late in the day. It is 3.30. Uh, it's Sunday, so there's all the um, uh, videos, uh, channels that I subscribe to on YouTube. All their stuff is coming out. So, yeah, I'm done. That was a great ride. Um, really beautiful. I just spoke to a couple from uh, Houston. <laughs> so, again, it's like either I meet Texans outside of Texas or I meet Houstonians outside of Houston. Like, there's nothing else. No, you never see any Austin people or like Dallas people anywhere. It's always Houstonians because <laughs> we just want to get out of the swamp. Anyway, so that's done. Um, so now I'm going to probably head toward, well, I have to head toward Fredericksburg. Um, I don't think there's anything else I can do today. It's Christmas Eve. Um, the campsite's probably about a third full here. I was like, well, maybe I can just stay here and just get an electric hookup. Um, but I think it's like 25 bucks. And I still am quite far from Marble Falls, which is where I'll be tomorrow. So um, I kind of I kind of want it to rain again. <laughs> so I don't think it's going to rain. Let me check the weather on my other phone. I think it's going to be fine. So yeah, South Llano River, even though it's like a double L. So I'm like South Llano, no, South Llano River. Yeah, it's just going to be, it's going to be cold tonight. It's going to be 47, 38 on Monday, 35 on Tuesday. So at least it's cooling down. Um, San Antonio not going back there yet. Burnett is where I'll be riding my bike and that's going to be in the 30s which will be fantastic. Um, Austin, Kerrville, so I'm not going back to Kerrville so delete that one. I have all the the weather you can see on here, the weather of all the places I'm going. So South Lana River, delete that one. Marble Falls tomorrow, be in the 50s and 60s, uh, no 40s to 50s tomorrow which is fantastic. So yeah, so it's going to be like nice and sunny the rest of the week which will be great. So yeah, so this is Sunday. <laughs> it's good. You know what? I'm glad I came back here. I definitely will come back to this park when I'm coming through on the 10. Um, I mean, it's just like, I don't know. It's such a hidden gem and no one, no one knows about it. It's only three miles off the freeway. It's in the town of Junction. Um, so if you get off at Junction and then like get off at the Junction Junction, and then if you're going eastbound, you turn left. If you're going westbound, you get off on the right side. No, if you're going eastbound, you turn right. If you're going westbound, you want to get off at the right-hand exit and then take a left and go about three miles. Really pretty, really nice people out here. This is where I went to the ER when I hurt my foot back in February. Um, but yeah, just super nice people, uh, small town. And yeah, I mean, Camp Host is talking to some uh, factory-built RV, uh, factory-built van owners. <laughs> so yeah, those uh, sprinters that are like the Winnebago's. But anyway, looks like a young couple. It's weird, I don't normally see younger couples that have the factory built ones. Um, so that's nice. It's like, it's like, yay, Gen X and millennials with like factory built stuff. I'm just kidding. I love my self-built camper van. Anyway, so yeah, it's getting hot. So I'm just gonna go into Fredericksburg and just uh, maybe just go for a walk around. So I did almost 10 miles on my bike, which is fantastic. I could have gone longer, but I, start, I started late and it's already, 3.30 so um, okay so I've got about probably an hour drive just under an hour and uh, yeah just go explore uh, maybe go get something to eat um, even though I just got groceries so or maybe just eat my onigiri which is the rice Japanese rice ball with it has crab meat in it it's so good it's the only it's the only kind that I can buy they don't have any that have ume um, umeboshi which is like the sour plum which is not my favorite so much um, but the uh, salmon tuna I've had like um, barbecue beef in there. I've had teriyaki chicken. Like basically you buy these like bowls of rice from the soup, from the uh, convenience store and you bite into it. If you can't read the kanji on the outside in Japan, you bite into it and it'll, it'll be a surprise. You're like, oh, that's, you know, salmon roe or that's caviar or something. Um, but anyway, so the only ones I've ever found in the supermarket here uh, are the crab ones, the spicy crab and the regular crab. So um, even at Japanese supermarkets, they don't have onigiri. Like you have to get there super early in the morning. And uh, anyway, so I was very spoiled in Japan for four years. Fantastic food all the time. Even the foreign food was fantastic. Just like their take on stuff. Anyway, okay, I babbled on enough. I need to get my hair dry. So yeah, let me just um, get on the road. And the nice thing is this is only, this whole trip is like two tanks of gas. So it cost me 
$37 to fill up, <laughs> which is fantastic. So it's gonna cost me maybe at most $80 in gas, no, uh, zero cost for accommodation, zero cost for the state parks, so they have the free park pass. Um, I got into the um, Natural Bridge Caverns for free, so that saved me $68. Um, they gave me a media pass and, and they looked at my channel and everything and they're like, oh, I was like, yay. So I was like, what? look out in like between four to eight weeks when the video comes out. Um, no, I'll get it done sooner than that. And then uh, the uh, Cascade Caverns was only 20. So, so far I'm probably going to be around, a, you know, $100 in expenses, uh, gas and, and entries. And then I spent like 20 bucks on food at the supermarket. So very, very 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 cheap once you have built a van it is very cheap to be able to travel around and yeah paying zero for accommodation and zero for parking um, that's the stuff that gets you when you travel not only just flights but even traveling domestically you have um, you know rental cars which I don't need you have got my shampoo rental cars that you don't need you have um, accommodation to pay for you have um, flights if you are gonna fly somewhere um, you know there's so many things that add up before you even get to a place and once you get there it's like well we just don't have the budget to eat out so then you don't get to experience the local food or we just don't have the budget to do this museum today or that museum today and it's a shame that like you know it, it's just it, then you have to work a second job to pay for your vacations or you know save up for a year to be able to take your family somewhere um, if you're able to do it where you can offset the cost of travel, like either renting a camper van is fantastic. When I was a kid, my mom took us on self-catering holidays. We stayed in, in chalets as they called them, um, like, you know, little, like, not Airbnbs because it wasn't around in the eighties, but yeah, we stayed in like, um, you know, like it was all self-catering. We'd bring our own food, we'd cook our own food, and we'd have more money to go do all of the excursions and trips and, and like day trips and things because we weren't having to, you know, my mom wasn't having to pay for two kids and her to eat out every time. We could just make our own food and bring the food from the fridge at home since it was going to go bad while we're gone. So there's all these things. And we had our own car. So we just, in England, so we just drive our own car. Um, yeah, and so it's like, it was, it was very cheap to be able to travel in the UK as a kid in the 80s. Um, you know, just, yeah, it's just like, but what, nowadays, you know, if you want to go on a trip to like the Grand Canyon, it's driving isn't really feasible because it's going to take weeks to drive, you know, from a lot of places. So then you got to fly and rent a car, you know. So I am very grateful and very glad that I made the decision to build, build the van because now when I have a free weekend or a couple days, I can just go out into nature, hug a tree, you know, step on a cactus and it's all good. And you know, you get back home and you're more refreshed. So even be a, a tourist in your own town. You never know if there's a neighbor that's got like a weird, you know, like, um, I don't know, um, dragonfly collection or like a weird thimble collection or, you know, that there's some something eclectic or some art exhibit somewhere or, you know, new restaurant you haven't been to, um, a hiking trail you didn't know about. You know, there's tons and tons of things. Even in Houston, when it's not 108 degrees, there's a ton of stuff you can do outdoors and, and a lot of hidden gems and, and cool things. So, um, yeah, highly recommend, like, even if you can't afford to travel, you don't have the time to travel or you just can't travel, Look, look around your own town. There's there's probably a lot of stuff that, that you never thought of doing because you didn't know about it, but um, just start looking on Google Maps. Uh, don't Google stuff. Don't say like, what can I do near my house? Um, but just look on, literally look on Google Maps and it'll bring up all sorts of things. I found interesting hiking trails like in Houston and different bike trails in places I've been because there'll be like a trailhead marker or something that maybe doesn't show up on all trails because it's, you know, hidden gem, not popular. Um, but yeah, like try to just, um, I don't know, if you want to, I mean, you don't have to, <laughs> to do anything I say, <laughs> you know? but if you'd like to be able to get out and about on the weekends with your family or your friends, um, yeah, definitely just, um, see what's around you and then, uh, you know, bring a picnic basket and, uh, just make a cool day of it. And that, that's the way I love to be. It's like, I, I love to just, just be, be out, you know, and, and not have to, penny pinch because there's nothing worse than getting all the way to a country and being like well we flew all the way to Switzerland like I was watching these youtubers like we flew all the way to Switzerland and we're going to eat this piece of bread and a cheese because we're on a budget and we're not going to do anything that they would do in the town I mean granted Switzerland is super expensive oh there's people left um granted it's super expensive that's weird the Winnebago just left they were talking to the host and they left 
don't know why they would leave. Maybe they're in the wrong wrong place. Anyway, um, but yeah, like they, they they were like they went all that way to Europe to live on a hundred dollars a day as a challenge. But then once they got to Switzerland, because they didn't offset the cost of their trip in other places, like the cheaper places like Slovakia and Romania, when they got to Switzerland, they were still on that hundred dollar budget, which you actually do have to adjust. Like when I'm in California, gas is twice as much as Texas. So I had to adjust my budget um, or, you know, just be mindful that I'm going to be spending more in gas. So, you know, it's like, and I still want to do all the activities, but maybe I just don't eat at any restaurants when I'm in California. Um, whereas I could do that in Texas because gas is like 220 a gallon. So, but anyway, short story long, um, I was kind of disappointed. I was watching the Switzerland episode because I do want to do Switzerland by train you know, sometime in the future and go exploring, go see the mountains. Um, but it is very expensive and they, they didn't do not even one single activity. They just sat and looked at the mountain and they were like, they're in, and they were in a town where that stuff is all you do in that town, like the activities. And so it just, it was kind of disappointing. And, and they're like, yeah, we'll be back in the future. I'm like, yeah, but you're there now. And you have a YouTube channel that makes money. You can replenish that extra bit that you're going to spend. Like, maybe offset the cost in the next place you go. And I don't know, that, that's how I would do it. How you do it is whatever. <laughs> so anyway, I'm gonna go, uh, get out of here now and go drive toward Fredericksburg, um, which I despise that town. It's so contrived and it's gonna be super busy, I think. Um, I was there in November, 2020. I think that was the last time I actually like stayed and hung out. Um, but I don't know, maybe I'll go get some Christmas, like German, the bakeries are good. I don't know if anything's open at four o'clock in the afternoon, but. I am going to um, just maybe just drive through the main drag and uh, there is a Starbucks there. So maybe I'll park up at Starbucks and try to get another video done. Uh, I think that would be a good option for me um, because I cranked one out yesterday and I'm so happy and I'm really glad the Insego 3000 is working and I have no affiliation with it. But if you do have uh, T-Mobile or you had Sprint and became T-Mobile, uh, check it out. It's only like... I think it only cost me like $15 a month for 30 gigs, which is crazy cheap. So, and I think I only rent it for like $4 a month or something. So you're looking at under $20, which compared to Starlink, it definitely is, I mean, Starlink, it will get you, you know, internet wherever you go. But for me, it's like, I'm, I'm not gonna be, I don't need the internet like at this moment, but when I'm in a town or I need to upload something, the Insego is, is actually better for that than Starbucks. So. I don't know, it's cheap and you save time. Now, if you need Starlink to like, you know, do other stuff, like actually work on the road in remote places, and that's fantastic. But if you're just kind of like, you know, a weekend warrior when it comes to doing your work, and then you're an all time player when it comes to playing all day and being outside, if you're that way, the way that I am, then yeah, I would say get a mobile hotspot. Don't waste your money on Starlink, um, unless you do want to like, because I can watch YouTube on, on the Insego as well. I mean, that's, that's the good thing is, you know, and that's really all I do. I, I don't sit around and do a whole ton of work when I'm, you know, in the van, but doing my videos, it is nice that I can just get them uploaded, you know, consistently while I'm on the road. Because in order to, I'm not monetized yet, but in order to keep your monetization, you have to have a um, 4,000 watch hours every month. So you've got to be consistently creating videos. But that's just the algorithm. So, okay, so that's it. Babbled on enough. I will see you later on.